This tuned radio frequency receiver is one of the older pieces in my collection. It features a right to left signal flow. The antenna would have been connected to this coil. This vacuum tube would have sent the signal to this coil, this coil to the next vacuum tube, the next vacuum tube to this coil, to the grid leak resistor, the detector tube. From there, it features transformer coupling between the detector and the first audio amplifier and transformer coupling between the first and the second audio amplifier. Perhaps on another day we can restore this radio. As you can see, it's pretty tore up. However, what I wanted to show you was the physical orientation between these coils. Now, remember that there's a vacuum tube here. We have a coil to couple the signal into the vacuum tube, and then a coil to couple the signal over to the next tube. The danger is that the energy from this coil here can be coupled back to this coil in which case we would create a self-sustained oscillation. The designers are very careful to prevent that from happening because they avoided right angles. For example, this would have been very bad because the energy here would be transmitted back to this. This orientation would also be bad because the energy from the output would be transferred back to the input. Instead, what they chose to do is mount the coils at this angle, which provided the least amount of coupling that coupled with the distance, prevented this receiver from oscillating. Before we depart, I have a question for you. Does this 100-year-old thinking have anything to do with us today? I would argue that it does because we still have inductors. Those inductors still have a magnetic field which may or may not be constrained within the body of the inductor. So, when you're designing your printed circuit board, be mindful of your inductor placement. That way you won't have energy being coupled to places it shouldn't.